My name is Courtney Lento, and this is my research presentation on Patis, Pancit, and Pinoy empowerment, a health outcome analysis amongst changing and colonized Filipino cuisine. Let's get started. Before diving into the data and the research, I actually wanted to establish a very clear background, especially because these struggles behind ethnic cuisine and Filipino food may not be commonly known. So on the left-hand side, you come to understand that Filipino food, despite being the most open to international cuisine, is actually the fourth least popular type of cuisine. It carries common messages of Filipino food being too smelly, too oily, too unappetizing, maybe disgusting to look at because of the lack of variety in food. Now this is how we come to understand seeing ethnic food via a lens of colonization. The same foods that I myself and other people within the Filipino diaspora hold very dear and near to our hearts was seemingly too disgusting, too smelly, and not enough in comparison to their Western counterparts. Now, this is not limited to just the Filipino diaspora, but is actually echoed throughout different communities of color. We often hear it with an ethnic cuisine in which our food is too smelly. So this is how we come to understand colonization as a factor in our food. Another interesting way that colonization actually impacts food on the right hand side is shifting away from native cuisine. For example, I present to you three pictures, three of the most popular dishes in the Philippines exactly. On the left-hand side, you have spam tosilog, the middle, pan bisal, and the right-hand side, pork adobo. Now, if you heard me correctly and paid a little bit of attention, you could actually hear loan words from the Spanish and English language. Spam, deriving from spam in America, and of course, pan bisal and adobo being foods and words from the Spanish language. This is how you come to understand colonization in Filipino food. None of these words, or any of the ingredients within them are considered native to the Philippines, yet they're the most popular three dishes in the Philippines. Moving on in regards to farming industry, you also see the impact of colonization. You see a strong shift of agriculture around crops that are towards a Western palate. So therefore you see a large loss of indigenous farming and self-determined crop diversity. Now this brings us to our research question, how does colonized change in cuisine impact people's relationships with food in the Philippines? As we dive into the literature review and a theoretical analysis, we come to understand these two major theories that help establish my research. The first theory is actually food sovereignty theory. Now it states that minority groups that carry a suppressed relationship with food due to an authority figure are more likely to suffer from food insecurity and poor health outcomes. This actually applies to both groups that are colonized by an oppressing force, but also groups that immigrate to a new location. The next theory is glycemic index and glycemic low theory, in which it talks about a way to quantify the impact of food on a human body. It also indicates that a higher mean average glycemic index over a consistent amount of time can result in poor health outcomes, such as a higher risk for heart disease. In order to comprehend how these theories implement themselves in my research, I actually produced this conceptual model to visualize everything. So we start out with our cause first, marked in red, and our effect marked in yellow. As you can see with our starting point, the increased colonization and slash or oppressive culture from majority party, it starts to trickle itself into different variables marked in white. Now these variables are based upon theories that we find in our literature analysis. And you can see it echoes these same topics such as glycemic index or the abandoning of native food practices. On the left hand side, you also see some extra theories that we use to establish a background. Now, of course, relationships are not as direct as we hope them to be in the real world. So we take into consideration marked in blue our median variables. And this may shift the way that relationships are affected. This brings us to our research design. Our hypothesis states that as the influence of colonized cuisine increases in the Philippines via changing food slash ingredients, health outcomes will decrease as measured through an increase in the mean glycemic index. Now again, this relationship is observed between our two variables, independent variable being food slash ingredient and dependent variable being our glycemic index value. Our data is actually comprised of 90 different food slash ingredients that have been manually collected, translated, and analyzed by myself as well as other members within the Filipino diaspora. 
we utilize a t-test to see a significant relationship between our classifications and data is divided into four groupings as seen on the bottom left corner. If you notice on the previous slide, there was a small conceptual model on the left hand side. This is the same model, but on a larger scale. I actually created this web map to determine the validity of the ingredients going into my data set. Now, because the glycemic index is a Western tool centered around Western ingredients, there is little to no information about the glycemic index of native Filipino ingredients. Because of this, I produced a way you can integrate native Filipino ingredients within your glycemic index database. So for example, you start off with one ingredient out of your 90 that we comprise in our data set. You ask yourself the question starting with the blue star on the top left corner, producing answers in your white circles, and you use the answers and outcomes within the blue box to determine how you're going to incorporate this within your data set. This is the outcome of all of our data and hard work. On the x-axis, you can see the names of different ingredients that were important during these time periods. And then the y-axis is your differing glycemic indexes. Of course, this data is divided based upon the four established classification groups. My data indicates a statistically significant relationship between the increase in colonized pressure and an increase in the mean for glycemic indexes of these ingredients. If you look on the left-hand side, marked and highlighted in bright green, you see that the difference of means starts to increase gradually as you increase the number of colonizing pressures. At the same time, when you look at p-values in the first table of pre-colonization minus trade and pre-colonization including trade, the p-value doesn't seem too statistically significant, but when you include colonizing forces in the next two tables, you start to see a significant p-value and a strong relationship between these two variables. Thank you again so much for your time, and this has been Patis Pancit and Pinoy Empowerment. Have a great day.